Thank you. It's an honor to be in the room with this many people who give a damn. Again, my name is Dane Wigington again with the website geoengineeringwatch.org. And the purpose of our site is to give credible, verifiable data to the public and to activists so that we might wake others up as well. It's our responsibility to wake them up because they're not waking up on their own. Clearly, we know that at this point. I never wanted this job. I'm not politically oriented. I'm not an activist. But quite simply, with my background with Bechtel Power and the renewable energy industry, my, my home was on the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine. When I moved to the Pacific Northwest thinking I would find clean air and seeing these trails above that were blocking, in some cases, 60, 70, 80 percent of my solar uptake, clearly something was going on. And research led me to this subject. I began testing water. Did not want to find these toxic heavy metals, but I did in ever-increasing amounts. I'm in this fight because my children have no future if we don't stop this. And even if we stop this, we faced immense challenges, immense. But this is the battle that we must win. Henry David Thoreau said, thank God men cannot fly or they would lay waste to the sky as they have done to the earth. That is now reality. Many days our skies look like something from another planet. And it's not just the horizon to horizon trails. On an otherwise clear day, there is even more climate engineering going on above the clouds on days like today. And we know this because it's coming down in the rain. We're not speculating. We have 70 plus lab tests in Northern California alone, lab tests from all over the globe. We've seen single rain events as high as 3,450 parts per billion of aluminum. That's an escalation of 50,000% from our original baseline. There's a mountain of metals raining down on all of us. So it's up to us, again, to make people, help people, to look up, to get past their denial, to understand what's going on, because we're all part of a grand and lethal experiment. This is not speculation. Again, we have government documents dating back to the 40s that state with no ambiguity, the scope and scale of these programs going back that far. 80-page presidential documents posted on geoengineeringwatch.org. What is geoengineering for those that are not yet familiar with this issue? Geoengineering is climate manipulation on a global scale. It's the attempt to manipulate Earth's life support systems. It involves a number of various layers. The largest and most visible, of course, is the saturation of the atmosphere with reflective, light-scattering, metallic particles. This is called solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, stratospheric aerosol injection. And it's imperative to use the climate, the, uh, the science terms. Many people want to use the chemtrails term. I'm not phobic of that term, but that term leads nowhere. And the mainstream media insists on using that term. I just got an interview request from PBS and in that interview request, they made it clear. They don't want to talk about climate engineering. They don't want to talk about geoengineering or solar radiation management. They want to talk about chemtrails because they want to marginalize this issue. CBS interviewed me, same story. Same story with mainstream media hitman David Pakman, insisting on using the chemtrails term. Use the science terms, we'll gain much more traction. About 150 patents exist on this issue. They don't give patents if there's not a functional process going on. We have proof, so much proof, if people would choose to, to look. It's imperative to gain traction on this issue also that people understand they must stand on credible data. So those that think, and many of them in our own movement, that the climate is not damaged, that if climate engineering stopped, everything would go back to normal. This is not reality. It's simply not reality. A lot of things have damaged our planet and there's no rationally denying that we have been very poor stewards of our planet. That being said, the single greatest mathematical effect on the Earth's climate system today is climate engineering. And there's no legitimate discussion of the climate without including climate engineering first and foremost. We have, with the geoengineering, weather warfare. This, this is part of climate engineering as well. We have a historical record of this going on, again, going back to the late 40s. We know that cyclonic suppression is not only possible, but being done, this is hurricane suppression and hurricane augmentation. 
We saw Cyclone Haiyan last year in the Philippines cut a swath through that island nation, and now the U.S. military is there under humanitarian pretext, but now they're setting up bases. Same thing happened in Pakistan. Same thing in Thailand. Thailand refused the U.S. a military base that they told Thailand was for weather monitoring. The Thai government apparently knew it was for weather manipulation. They refused the base. Thailand immediately found itself underneath record floods. So on the snow end, which was brought up earlier, we know and have proof of chemical ice nucleation for snowstorms. The Chinese government stated it openly. Mainstream media covered it. For any who care to look, Google Chinese scientists create artificial snowstorms. The Chinese government openly admitted this till they did a billion dollars worth of damage to Beijing, a billion with a B. So we know this is going on, and when you have climate engineering, you cannot separate that from biological warfare. You cannot. So we have a climate science community that is either clinically blind, in total denial, or lying for a paycheck. How can you have the largest scientific panel in human history, the IPCC, 2,000 climatologists, that cannot recognize this atrocity in our skies? How is that possible? So the, the degree to which academia has been hijacked and compromised is, is hard to believe at this point. It's up to us to put this train back on the tracks. Why? People ask why. Why would they do this? It doesn't take a lot of consideration to answer this question. It's about power and control. It's always been about power and control. Until we say no, it will always be about power and control. Weather warfare I've mentioned. This is a tool by which the power structure can win wars without firing a shot. And we have leaders of nations on the floor of the UN stating that their country is being droughted out by NATO weather modification programs. This is fact, absolute fact. Our media does not cover any of this. And those that think that the climate can't be manipulated simply have not done their research. We know from 1992, Mount Pinatubo, a, a not so significant eruption, made 1992 by 50% the lowest rainfall year ever recorded. What happens when you put thousands of aircraft in the air 24 seven, dumping, and this is a stated goal by the climate engineers, by the way, dumping 20 million tons, 20 million tons of aluminum nanoparticles into the atmosphere annually. Nobody mentions the fallout. In fact, I, I have a video footage of myself at an international geoengineering conference with the most recognized geoengineer on the planet, David Keith, admitting on the record he had done no study. They have done no study with dumping 20 million tons of aluminum nanoparticulates. When I asked him about any study, his first answer was, well, there's a lot of particulates in the atmosphere, a little bit more won't hurt. Paraphrase, that's what he said. And when I cornered him as to those particulates, Mr. Keith, are not aluminum. And he said, let me be more careful. Have we studied aluminum? No. Could terrible things happen tomorrow? We don't know. So how does it feel to be a lab rat? They don't know and they don't care. And that's where we're at. So again, why are they doing this? Power and control, weather warfare, Weather trading derivatives. We have defense contractors like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, literally part of a gaming casino on Wall Street that trade weather derivatives. So they literally make money on wherever the disasters happen. This is going on right now. We've verified this again and again. We've posted some of the weather derivatives trading organizations. We've posted their, their data. We have the, the global elite and the bankers involved with this. Now everybody asks who? Who's doing this? Who's doing everything? Who prints the money? That's the bottom line. It all goes back to the money. Our military is not run by some elected official who's here for the common good. The train is completely off the rails. And we'd better realize that and bring it to light because we're all in a Thelma and Louise moment. If any of you know what that is, we're through the guardrails. And the next stop is the bottom of the canyon. We'd better wake up fast and set our priorities. If we can't bring this to light, we're going to have nothing left to salvage soon. Who else is involved with this? China, Russia, 
in collaboration. There's strategic differences, but we know they're collaborating. Even though they're fighting at the surface, they're collaborating behind the scenes. Obama just got back from China. Why was he there? It's not about reducing carbon credits. They don't give a damn about carbon credits. And I'm not an Al Gore fan, by the way, or carbon credits. Al Gore is a part of the establishment. His hypocrisy can barely be comprehended. But there is collusion behind the scenes, and we know this because we've had pictures. We found a picture from 1968. Soviet climate modification scientists in the U.S. touring U.S. climate modification facilities at the height of the Cold War. So we know there is collusion. The G20 meeting in Brisbane that many of you know is going on, or it just went on, and it was stated that the main subject of discussion was the climate. And this is again collusion. There is no question these countries are at the same thing. China openly announced it. Many of you might remember during the Olympics, China said, don't worry, we won't let it rain. And anybody who don't, doesn't think they have this power, they do. But you can point this out to officials, and they don't care, because the only thing they're concerned about is protecting their paycheck. Now, so we know some of the players involved. We have NATO, China, Russia, those are the big players. But many ask, and this is a question that so many struggle with, why would they do this? Why would they do this to themselves? And this is a stumbling block for a lot of people because they just can't answer this question. They can't fathom why those in power would do this to themselves. But how many examples, I would ask, do we need of them doing this to themselves? How many examples? Detonation of over 2,000 nuclear weapons on planet Earth. Every life form is contaminated with strontium-90 from these detonations. They went down and blew up pristine South Seas Islands, set up ships as if they were toys. In one case, almost 200 fully functional warships were blown apart with animals strapped to the surface. We're not dealing with sane people here. Let's go to more current examples. How about depleted uranium in the Gulf of Mex or the, uh, the Gulf War, excuse me. For those that don't know what that is, it's what our weapons are tipped with. So do the people at the Pentagon care about our own troops? They tell us to. They tell us to support our wounded warriors, and I respect the military. Make no mistake, I respect the military. I volunteered to rehab Vietnam vets for a long time. But those in the Pentagon don't give a damn, so we had Gulf War Syndrome, 180,000 troops that came home sickened from depleted uranium. They don't care. Those areas of the planet where this ammunition was used are contaminated forever. The total consequences of climate engineering are so incredibly expansive. It's, it's difficult to cover it all. Climate engineering is shredding the ozone layer. Corey went over a little bit of that. And we know this. We know we're not being told the actual readings because we're metering it. I posted today on our site film footage of me using state-of-the-art meters on camera to show the readings. We're seeing UVB levels that are as much as 1,000% higher than we're being told. We're told by all major agencies that no more than 5% of all incoming UV should be UVB and no UVC. We're getting slight UVC readings on the surface, which we're told stops 100,000 feet up, and we're getting UVB readings that are 60% of incoming UVB. It's burning the bark off of trees. Drive around, look at Costco, Walmart, Look at some of those trees, and then you'll hear people say, oh, it's the park. This is what the officials have told us. It's the reflection off the parking lot. Well, how come it wasn't that way 10 years ago? And how come it's that way in the woods? Is there a parked car out there somewhere with the reflection off the windshield? I mean, this is the kind of answer we get from our, quote, public of officials. So we have a shredded ozone layer. We have a disrupted hydrological cycle. I was in Gavin Newsom's office, lieutenant governor with his aide, on February 9th of this year, presented data to he and his aide. Irrefutable data, satellite imagery of grid pattern spraying off of our coast. Two and two equals four. When you aerosolize the storm track, you disrupt the hydrological cycle. I told Gavin at that date, if this continued, we would, could, we would progress into the worst drought the state's ever had. I'm not looking into a crystal ball. Again, this is a two and two equals four. We have the science data to back this up. What happens when you put aerosols in the atmosphere? They don't care. Their paycheck is coming from the same people who are behind all this. The same people, again, back to the insanity question. One more issue in that front. Fukushima may kill us all. 
And at the same time, Obama just approved $6.5 billion to build some more nuke plants in Georgia. So again, it's important to understand we're not dealing with sanity in any way, shape, or form. So the effects of climate engineering, the hydrological cycle, toxified soils, waters, and we're seeing species extinction rate that are completely off the charts. We have fires. We have boreal forests burning down around the globe. In fact, Siberia is losing about 100 million acres a year. Try to get your arms around that. Canada lost 600% more forest to forest fires this year than the 30-year norm, which is already high. The boreal forests are not producing oxygen as they should and would because we have an intense UV, we have toxic rain, we have a lack of precipitation. So instead of being a carbon sink and absorbing carbon, they're now a carbon source. Global oxygen content is plummeting. We have plankton decline. Plankton is 50% of the Earth's oxygen content, so every breath we take is also laden with these materials. So this is the bottom line. There is nothing in the web of life that's not horrifically affected by climate engineering. Earth is now a toxic planet. There's no question about this. You can't hide from this. In fact, the only uncontaminated body of water on the planet is Lake Vostok in Antarctica because it's below a mile of ice. That's it. Nothing is uncontaminated, but the greatest single source is, again, climate engineering. All roads lead back to climate engineering. Why are the bees dying off? Colony collapse disorder. And I've spoken to the head bee people in the country, but they won't look. A lot of people in academia, I'm sorry to say, I don't put all of them in this category because we have some very courageous people here tonight, but a lot of them feel they know it all. And it's hard to add to a cup that's already full. So why are the bees dying a thousand miles into the wilderness? They're looking at a chemical, and chemicals are bad. But why are the bees dying a thousand miles into the wilderness? We have a study from 2010. A thousand whales from the most remote places on the planet that had, quote, jaw-dropping levels of aluminum in their tissue. There is nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide from this. How many have already died? How many people have already died as a direct result of these programs? Respiratory mortality in the continental US from 2005 to 2010 went from eighth on the list of mortality to third. That's an astronomical amount of people. How many people have asthma, Alzheimer's? The list goes on and on. I'll get to that more in a moment, but this is the gift of the global elite. And as long as we take it, they'll continue to dish it up. Again, the consequences to our health, I listed some of the ailments. We also have Alzheimer's. By the way, the Alzheimer's Association, about a month ago, refused to sell me a $500 sponsorship for their event because they told me in no uncertain terms they did not want me talking about aluminum being connected to Alzheimer's. <laughs> now, I think everybody in the room probably knows there's a connection. We have peer-reviewed science study that says there's a connection, but they would not allow me to sponsor because they didn't want me to talk about that, and they certainly didn't want me to talk about the fact that we have a verifiable aluminum contamination all over the globe, especially here in Shasta County, which we verified over and over. So we did a little research and found out that elements of the aluminum industry sponsor the Alzheimer's Association. What a surprise. So this is what we have at every level, at every level. The fox is literally running the hen house, and we will all pay the price if we continue. Autism, we've gotten statistics recently from MIT. Now. Within 10 years on the current trajectory, one in two children will have autism. This is from MIT. This is not from some fringe group. One in two. We've gone from one in 5,000 in 1975, one in 10,000 in 1965, one in 5,000, one in 47 today. That's a 10,000% increase in 39 years. And now we're talking about one in two? We can't survive like that. On the current trajectory, the, the biosphere won't survive even that long if we don't deal with this. Extinction, again, 200 species of plant and animal going extinct a day. That's 10,000 times background extinction. Fish populations crashing around the globe. Tuna populations is down 97%. Global pelagic fish populations down 95%. Many have seen the fish kills that are happening around that they just can't figure out what it is. It's methane release from the seafloor and hydrogen sulfide that deoxygenates the water, creates hypoxic and anoxic zones. That's what causes fish to die that fast. They're probably radioactive as well. We have a whole array of issues here going on, but 
the, the oceans are warming. Again, that releases methane. Methane goes into the atmosphere. Climate engineering, although the stated purpose, again, is to block some of the sun's incoming thermal radiation. That's what solar radiation management is that I mentioned earlier. But of course, it traps heat as well and does everything else I said. Shreds the, shreds the ozone layer, disrupts the hydrological cycle. It's like the pharmaceutical cure for planet Earth. How many commercials do we see now that state, take this for that, and by the way, there's 50 other side effects that are worse by far than what you're trying to cure. The next commercial is usually an attorney telling you who to sue. <laughs> so like, one more fun fact and I'll, I'll move on. Last 40 years, human population has doubled. Wild, global wildlife populations have declined by almost two thirds. How long can that continue? Resources, civilization, it's, 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 at this, in the current paradigm, it's a snake eating its own tail. Now, the power structure has set this up for us. How much technology has been suppressed in order to keep the fossil fuel paradigm going? How much? We don't know. We can't know. Populations also have to take some responsibility because unlike a lot of people that are willing to come to this meeting, a lot of people aren't. Their time is occupied with football games and American Idol. That's not going to go on much longer. So if you're standing on the end of the plank, it's time that you have to either move forward or fall off the end. And that's where we're at. The power structure, the military industrial complex will never, ever admit defeat. Never. They will keep this machine grinding on until there's nothing left. It's their mentality. Never do they admit defeat. We must reach our military brothers and sisters who are being told they're doing something for the common good with the aerosol operations. That's what they're being told. I know that's what they're being told. I've talked to a KC-135 pilot. I've talked to a few other people. We must reach them and make them realize they are killing their own along with the rest of us. They're not helping, they're hurting. So I salute our military brothers and sisters. But I was told, one more note on this, I talked to a, an insider with these programs. I, I can't release his name, but I published the conversation. And here's what he said. The government will never disclose these programs because they know if the public found out, and I'm quoting about verbatim, they would find those responsible and shoot them or hang them in front of a firing squad. They know how the public will react to this. It's up to us to expose it. The atmosphere is as thin as a layer of paint on a basketball. Try to get your arms around that. That's what allows us to live here and how many take that for granted and how long can you experiment with that and still survive on this planet? And we're about to find out. If this continues, we're about to find out. If the insects die and the trees die, we'll be right behind them. I assure you, we'll be right behind them. And all are dying. I know, I know and love trees. My father was an arborist. And they're dying everywhere. That should be a canary in the coal mine, certainly. The human race is indeed painting into a corner. And every day these programs go on, we're further and further into a corner. But I would argue this point again. So many people want to hide in the cabin of the Titanic as it's sinking. And that won't save you. And how many people, anyone in this room could be, could be the, the pebble that causes the landslide of awareness to really get going? Any one of us could be. The mathematical equation I use, if one person, I've used this a lot, but these are important analogies. If one person woke two up on the first day of a 30-day month, and those two, two each the second day, and so on, for 30 days, that's five and a half million. We can make this go exponential if we all work together. But our, our current reality is ending by the day. The sooner we face this, the more we'll have left to salvage. And we'll get on to what we're going to do next year by the time we get to the end of this. It's up to all of us to make our voice heard. And on the reality that we're seeing, it's everybody needs to try to help others to clear their lens. Because we're all looking through lenses. We see the world in a very colored fashion. We're trained this way. We're conditioned this way. The conditioning goes on. We see aerosol spray trails in kids' films over the hedge, cars. They put them in to condition the children. There's a NASA program to teach children that condensation, these what they call condensation trails, we know they're particular trails, are safe and benign. That's how insidious this is. And we're singling out these people, and by the way. We're finding them posting their public emails with NASA, whoever they're with, and putting them out for the larger community to see so that they know we know who they are and what they're doing. There has to be accountability in this equation. We must make our voice heard. So the training is very deep with all of us. When I was about eight years old, it was the first time I saw the Kennedy film, of the Kennedy being assassinated. It was in about 1970. And I remember asking my parents, how can you get shot 
from behind, your head flies backward. And they were both so conditioned that they simply said, uh, the government has this all figured out and that's that. And I, I got a little reprimand for even questioning that. And now, and I'm not changing themes at all. I, I, I bought, at my own expense, a lot of 9-11 DVDs. And I hope some of you take those. I know Richard Gage. He's a, he's a, a great man. Architects and Engineers for Truth. The reason I bring this up, relating to climate engineering, if the global elite can bring buildings to the ground that were clearly demolition, let's forget the first trade towers, let's forget them. How many know there was a third building? The media has hid that, okay, good. I'm glad some know. A third 50-story steel structure high-rise building came to the ground at free fall speed, and we're told that happened because some couches and chairs were burning on the first floor. If that's the case, people should panic and run for the exits if somebody lights a cigarette up. This is, this is how blind people are. This is how blind they are. No investigation. They carted the steel away in two weeks. No investigation at all. This is my point. We need to open our eyes because we are literally careening down the side of the canyon now. Not a decade or two away, it's happening now. Mathematically speaking, the top scientists on the globe right now have, have told us about 60 days ago, on the current trajectory, there will be no life left on Earth by 2040. Now, that may seem completely like a brick from the sky to people, but these top 80 scientists were just excluded from a methane meeting in the UK because media and governments don't want that out. And this is, I bring this up for this point, if we stay on the current trajectory, all of us take risks when we drive on any highway. If we turn the wheel a little bit, we're gonna go into the front of a semi. Let's turn this ship. It will take all of us, but let's turn this ship and have something left to salvage. And these methane scientists state this, again, the overall consequences of climate engineering. Methane is releasing from the Arctic right now. Climate engineering has made this worse, not better. This shouldn't be a surprise. When you interfere with Earth's natural systems, it makes things worse, not better. So the latest observations from the Arctic, we're seeing methane plumes 150 kilometers wide. Methane's entering the atmosphere. There's enough methane there to mathematically cause a Permian-style mass extinction 100 times over. Climate engineering has altered upper level wind currents. That's altered ocean currents. Now we have warm water pumping straight into the Arctic. We have a shredded ozone layer. And now we have methane release. The more methane releases, the more heating that occurs. The more methane releases, it's called a positive feedback cycle. My point is this. We have to decide our next course of action. We have to turn this ship now. And I've been in, by the way, I've been, I've been in Barbara Boxer's office. I've spoken in front of the California Energy Commission. I've spoken in front of CARB. I recently had an encounter with Congressman Doug LaMalfa. That was on film. A week earlier, he told me if I gave him credible data, he would address this issue. He's had data for a year, done nothing with it, but I confronted him publicly. So the following week, I confronted him publicly again. Gave him data from California EPA, and his staffers have now told me that they, do not, they don't recognize California EPA as a credible source of data. So where do you go with that? And this is my point, it's up to us. It's up to us to make the media cover this because too many people are lying and denying for a paycheck while we all go down with the ship. Agencies are used to hide these issues, not to expose them. High-level EPA meeting I was in with a congressional rep, five top EPA people, and they made it clear that they are not looking for any of these materials. They look for combustion particulates only. That's it. You can't find what you're not looking for. So people who think that air quality and EPA are here to help us think again. Think again. I'm not saying there's not exceptions. I had the CEO of the largest environmental consulting firm in the country, second largest in the world, coming here to Shasta County to testify in front of the Board of Supervisors. And five days before that, he got a call from Rick Simon, our building and safety manager, who apparently held over the CEO's head that their company had contracts with Shasta County. So he would not come. That's what's happening right here, right now. And then it took about 20 minutes for him to tell us in as many words as he could so it wouldn't be comprehensible. They don't test for these particulates. He knew that some of us knew that, so he couldn't lie. They test for PM10 or PM2.5. That's 10 micron or 2.5 micron. That's a boulder compared to the particulates we're talking about. 
Again, you can't find what you're not looking for. The smaller the particulate, the more harmful it is for you. And we know from internationally recognized neuroscientists like Dr. Russell Blaylock, look up anything I'm saying. These particulates are so small, they enter right through the lung lining, go straight into the bloodstream, and adhere to your cell receptors like a plaque. Again, we are all getting dumber by the day. And that's why, again, I focus on this issue. If we can't think clearly, what challenges will we face? None. We will face none. And as far as what the global elite do to exempt themselves, there are chelation methods available to them that we don't have. So, again, the, the urgency of our issue can't be overstated. The power structure is digging in for collapse, by the way. This is a fact. I've covered this in other presentations. I won't go into it now, but they're digging what's called dumbs, deep underground military bases. They are digging in. No question about this. We are right now headed for a brick wall at 100 miles an hour, and we're about 10 feet from impact. Environmental groups and churches, where are they? I'm not faulting any particular spiritual institution at all, but where are they, and why aren't there leaders on this issue? In most cases, we feel it's because they are protecting their 501c3. Back to the money. Back to the money. That's what they're protecting, and I've spoken with many of them. The head of the Sierra Club for Northern California I've given data to for eight years. My last confrontation with him was at Earth Day some months back where I asked him when would he address the house burning down instead of trimming the hedge in the yard. When would he do that? And he walked away. He doesn't want to hear anymore. He doesn't want to address this and he doesn't want any of his people to address it because that could cost them money on their C3 and ultimately if they talk about the wrong issue perhaps their, their 501 will be revoked. Same with the spiritual institutions. But you tell me in, in scripture, and I don't care which, which spiritual institution we're talking about, it doesn't say it's okay to do nothing. It doesn't say that. I know scripture. It's up to us to act. It's up to us to do what we can. So again, with these environmental groups, from the Sierra Club to Greenpeace, I debated Greenpeace's top scientist on a national radio show about a year ago, it was clear he knew this was going on. It was abundantly clear. I confronted him to the point where I, I was, felt they might take me off the air. And by the way, I was taken off the air by climate scientist Simon Donner on another radio show. He's one of the top climatologists in the world. He said on that radio show, it looks like they're spraying, but I know for sure they're not. <laughs> now, you can't say this as a scientist. You can't say anything that definitively. And when I cornered him on that, when I said, Simon, how can you possibly say, as a scientist, that you know they're not doing this in the air, off the air? Disconnected me that fast. So that's the sort of control we have going on. Betrayal. How much of a betrayal is it when not just the people engaged with these programs, not just the people that are facilitating these programs, filling the aircraft, flying the aircraft, how much betrayal is it by Media, our own media, our own officials, right here, right now, it's total betrayal. And we have Mike Kruger, and we have to name names. There's no beating around the bush. You know, these people are costing us our lives. We have the North State meteorologist telling their newsroom they can't talk about this issue. We've had a number of prominent people in the community try to go in there and say, hey, we have questions. No, you, we can't talk about this issue, and that's not okay. And that's why we're here tonight, and that's our next step. I'll get to that at the end, but that's not okay for our North State News, who pretends to represent us and our interests, stonewalling us on the single most grave danger we face right now short of nuclear cataclysm. It's not okay for them to stonewall us. The Rothschilds own the Weather Channel. Who owns KRCR? We can track it back to similar circles. There's only six primary media companies, that's correct. So we know that when we want, if you, anybody watches the Weather Channel, it looks like theater. Their job is to paint a certain picture, that's what they do. They control the message. Again, Raytheon does all the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA. Raytheon's up to their neck in climate modification. Lockheed Martin does all the weather modification for, or the climate modeling for the FAA. All of us are in direct assaults, under direct assault, every day, every breath you take. This is nothing short of a direct assault. If we're to have any chance for a living planet, we must stop this, we must stand together. We must take a stand together. 
This must be a priority or we're going nowhere. But if we make it a priority, they won't be able to stop us. If we start enough spot fires, they can't put them out. They can't. We start enough all over the landscape. And people wonder, well, what do I do? Or where do I show up? Or what meeting? You don't have to go to a meeting. There's plenty of data online. You can, you can contact people over, over the internet, send out what we have called a flaming arrow package to groups, organizations, individuals. Wake them up. Once they know they're going down with the ship, they'll join us. So again, this is a battle that we have to win. We have to win. It's not an option. Climate engineering doesn't stop mathematically. We literally have no chance for long-term survival. That's a mathematical fact. Back to betrayal again, for whether it's our local media, our local officials, or anybody else up the line. One of the most incredible men that I feel ever lived, Martin Luther King, said there comes a time when silence is betrayal. And we are at that time now. If we love our children, how many people I know who claim to love their children, but they don't have time for this, They'd rather watch a football game and have a beer while the ship goes down. I can't look at my children and do that. I can't. I've been at this for 12 years now, total. And I'm very grateful for everybody in this room, but I can't look at them and not do this with every fiber of my being. We need, we need to join together. You know, I, I, wish, I, des I wish I deserved that, you know? I, and I'm grateful for it, but I'm just doing what any decent father would do, what Morrow does for his kids, what, what all of us should be doing. But I'm, I'm grateful that, again, to be in a room of people who give a damn. We must abandon our differences. And I know there's people in this room from the Tea Party to the Green Party, and that's what needs to happen. We're, we're going to sink or swim together. It comes down to this. Nobody has given these people this power. Nobody. I haven't. I know you haven't. They've taken it because we've allowed them to take it. We have to stand now. We don't have tomorrow if we don't take a stand now. If we simply expose climate engineering, you will see the dominoes fall. You will see them fall. Just like this insider who told me in this conversation, if the public knew, they would seek out those responsible. If we could simply crack the dam, and we could put a crack in the dam right here in Shasta County, and once that crack is in the dam, there'll be no stopping it, because I know people in academia that are waiting to come out of the shadows. They just need the cover to do it. And we could give them that cover. All of us working together could give them that cover. Our lives. Thank you. Our lives and our children's lives depend on this, literally. And when you share data, don't do it with trepidation and timidity. Be confident of what you know. We know they're spraying. We have film footage of it happening. Into the argument. Share with confidence and people will recognize this. If we all pull together, we can start enough spot fires again where they can't put them out. It's an honor, I will say one more time, to be in this room with this many people and all the people that helped this happen. I'm immensely grateful to all of you. It's an honor to be here with you. Thank you for joining us in this critical fight.